Self storage development step six, finishing touches. After we had the buildings constructed and the doors installed, you'd think we were almost done and ready to open for business, right? Well, no, that's actually wrong. There were a lot of finishing touches required to get this facility operational. And in this video, I'm not even gonna talk about all of them, but I'm gonna talk about some of the more notable ones and some of the challenges that came up and how we dealt with them. So one of the biggest and most time consuming challenges that I encountered was the moving of two power poles that were kind of in the way. And we first identified this problem back in the design stage when we realized that one of the existing power poles was gonna be right in the middle of the drive lane for our parking lot. And another one of the power poles was in the middle of a big excavation area where we were gonna be cutting out about 10 feet of soil from under it. So the pole would have to be reset. And even from the get go, I I knew this was gonna be a bit of a challenge because these poles are owned by our local utility company. And in order to get them moved, we'd have to pay them over $12,000 and then wait for them to get around to it. And if you know anything about utility companies, they generally don't care that much about you because they have no competition or reason to work quickly or impress you. You have to use their services whether you want to or not. So, you know, in our case, we had to wait for about three months after we paid the money. And then when they finally got the job done we were all excited but then we saw that they left two other wires on the old poles they didn't actually move all the wires for us so we still couldn't remove the old poles and we couldn't proceed with excavation so we basically had to start all over again and figure out whose wires are these and who do we have to call to get them moved and we found that one of them was the local cable company and the other tiny little one was from the local public school system it was their fiber wire for their internet Getting the cable company's wire moved was probably the worst because I had to get on the phone with them. I think it was 22 times. It was just mind numbingly frustrating and things didn't finally get traction until I had my attorney draft kind of a threatening letter to them. And then mysteriously, they all of a sudden got right on it. And in less than two weeks, they got it moved. But to their credit, they actually didn't charge us anything. We paid zero dollars for them to do their part. And while all this was going down, we were simultaneously trying to work on getting this other tiny little wire moved from the local public schools. And all in all, it cost us almost $10,000 to move that one tiny wire. So we finally got that done and moving those other two wires took us an additional two months. So $22,000 and five months later, we got the new poles put in, all the wires moved and the old poles were dug up. And uh, in hindsight, if I could do this over, I would probably just leave those poles in place and redesign the site to work around the poles. Knowing what I know now, I honestly don't think it was worth all the headache. So next up was the security cameras. So as I learned, there are some wide variations in how much you can pay for a security camera system. The local companies near us were charging $25,000 and up for a facility like this, which just felt like a lot of money. And luckily I was able to find a guy in one of the Facebook groups from New Jersey, and he had a pretty reasonable quote of about uh, $10,500, I think it was. And that was to put in 21 security cameras and have all the security camera footage housed on site. And these these were LTS cameras, they're all 4K, high resolution. We can see all the camera feeds from an app on our phone, either live as it's happening, or we can go back to previous days and see replays. And all the electronics are housed in the big climate controlled NEMA enclosure that we have on our site. In this camera system, it's not wireless, like there are wires that connect it for the power source from each building, but it is wireless in terms of using Wi-Fi. So all the camera feeds go to this hub thing that are in each building, which then shoots a signal back to the home base. And that's where all the data is stored in the computer. And that's where we're able to see everything remotely. And to his credit, the guy that installed all these cameras, his name was Steve. He did a great job and worked through some very cold, frigid weather. So if you do need a camera guy, I'm gonna include his contact info beneath this video. So another big finishing touch in putting this storage facility together was the signage. And when I say signage, I mean unit stickers for each unit. So 
people know which unit they're in and the road signs and a unit map sign and a sign with a QR code so people can rent online from their phones at the driveway before they get in. Also signage for our parking spaces. I'm actually making a separate video about how we put these together. I'll link to that below once it's ready if you want to check that out, but that was a little bit of a process. And also big letter signs to indicate each of the buildings because we chose to differentiate and name our buildings A, B, C, and D. Just so that if I say, hey, it's in building C, I know exactly which one that is. And the company I used for this was Extreme Graphics. And I gotta say, they were great to work with. One of my favorite vendors that we used in this construction process, they did a great job of designing, printing, and installing these signs. And the cost was actually great compared to some of the other alternatives I found out there. One big discovery I made about signage is that it is very easy to way overspend on a road sign. Initially, I got a quote from another local sign company for one two-sided pylon sign. That's the kind that like sticks up in the air on a pole and also for a single two-sided monument sign. And both of these signs would have been illuminated internally. So you would be able to see them at night. And the quote I got for the pylon sign was almost 9,000 bucks. And the quote I got for the monument sign was about 7,500 bucks. And whichever route I would go, I would only get a single two-sided sign. And the more I got to think about it, and also after observing other storage facilities in my area, I realized that uh, I didn't actually need a super fancy high-end sign like this. I mean, this is just a storage facility. All I need is for it to look decent and for people to understand that there's a storage facility there and have the phone number and website and a QR code and our logo on there and that's it. And luckily I had met another local storage facility owner who had used Extreme Graphics and told me about them. So I got a quote for a very similar sign, the exact same size and double-sided. The only difference was that theirs would be mounted on two fence posts and then their signs also wouldn't be illuminated. But it's actually not a big deal because our storage facility closes at 9 p.m. anyway. At the most, we might at some point get some solar powered lights to shine on the sign just to keep it lit for a few hours into the night. But even if we don't do that, it doesn't really need to be lit up at night. And for two of these two sided signs, not one, but two of them installed, it was a little bit over $2,400 from Extreme Graphics. So we saved a ton of money and got twice the amount of product just by finding a more practical solution and then getting a quote from the right company. And uh, in the next video, we're gonna talk about some other big finishing touches, which includes the asphalt, the curb and gutter, parking lot lines, controlling some of the erosion around the site, which was definitely an issue with our site, just given some of the natural topographical challenges we had. And then also installing the fence and gate and how we did a soft opening so that we were able to start renting out units before everything was finished and before we got our final CFO. This was a big help in generating some revenue sooner rather than later. And uh, I'll explain all that to you in the next video. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you then.